good afternoon, whatever. Podcasts don't acknowledge time. We're recording into a vacuum. There are no clocks or calendars here. But hey, whatever time and place you're in, I hope it's good. I hope it's what you want. Hello, my name is Eve Sturgis. And if I am being honest, right now it is smack dab in the middle of an afternoon. And I'd say it's just fine. I am the host of this podcast, Everything's Relative, and I'm here to talk about DNA discoveries, a growing phenomenon shaking up people's identities in all sorts of ways as direct-to-consumer tests become more popular. Thought you were related to both your parents? Maybe you're not. Thought you knew who your siblings were? Maybe there's more. Thought you understood your place on this planet? You probably don't. And that's what we're exploring here. Linda is one of those people. She reached out to tell her story, and I'm so glad she did, because as much as she's hoping people will tell her she's not alone, her story will now communicate to my listeners that they are not alone. Great example of people helping people and helping themselves, and it helps me, and I love it. Linda and I talked towards the end about meeting up in Louisville, Kentucky, and if you are listening to this episode when I've posted it, then it's right around the time of the Untangling Our Roots Summit. It is happening in Louisville, March 31st to April 2nd in 2023. So I hope that Linda and I get to meet up. Are you going to be there? Please let me know. Please come say hi. So while you're looking up what it takes to get to Louisville, I'm going to play this tape of me and Linda talking last winter. Thank you so much for listening, folks. This is Everything's Relative, and I'm Eve Sturgis. Your name is Linda. Yes. And where are you located? Right now, I'm located in uh, Evansville, Indiana. I'm originally from Illinois. I lived there for 42 and a half years. Okay. I met my now husband, who is the most amazing guy in the world. Um, And we've been together almost eight years. And He's the best thing that's ever happened to me. Oh, awesome. I, I, I can't express it enough that because I've been in so many bad relationships mm-hmm. and then to find him and I, you know, find somebody that I always gave a hundred percent and then having somebody give back a hundred percent is a new thing. <laughs> oh yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Yeah. But I moved to Evansville to be with him, mm-hmm. but, and it's the best thing I ever did. And let's say, sounds like it was worth it. So Tell me a little bit about what it was like growing up. I grew up with four sisters. Um, I had three older sisters and a younger sister. Um, when I was, I there was always this picture of my parents at their wedding picture and then my three older sisters. For years, it sat in the same place. And and I knew that my mom was pregnant with me, but it didn't register, ever register with me that why is why am I in her belly and why are my three older sisters in this picture? So they're present alive as children in your parents' yeah. wedding picture. So you weren't right. doing like uh math at the time. You yeah. weren't doing well, like, right. was like when I was 12. I questioned it and Mm -hmm. then I found out that mom had been married before and had three kids and then she met my dad and had me or I thought me Mm -hmm. and my sister Elaine. Mm -hmm. So um, I had a good childhood. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to, I mean, my parents took very well good care. I mean, my dad took on three kids. I was just about to say, so he just took it on. He just took on as, as their dad and they called it, they, they called him dad and everything. Yeah. Yeah. I always felt, and it all makes sense now, but I seriously felt like I didn't belong. Like I can't explain to you how much I didn't feel like I belonged, especially with my three older sisters. And one is eight years older. One's four and one's one's eight, six and two, four years, eight, six and four. Mm -hmm. That's pretty big. That's a pretty big age spread. Yeah. And I mean, Tina, the oldest sister, moved out when she was 16. So, I mean, I remember her. I mean, we're obviously, but so the other two were, you know, four and six years older with me. And then I had my youngest sister, which was a year and seven months from when you know, we were mm-hmm. different. So it's almost like two different parties, one of the three, the three older sisters and then the yeah, two I younger sisters. Yeah, I was really, really yeah. close to my youngest sister. When I say I fell out of place, like, it was almost like I didn't exist. Mm-hmm. Uh people 
didn't even know that they knew of Linda and Elaine, but they thought Linda Elaine was one person. They didn't hmm. really, and realize that it was me. I was Linda, and that was Elaine. She was really good in sports, and 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 just just uh, you know did all kinds of things. And there's there was me. There was Linda, the shy, you know, hated school. I mean, I yeah, hated it. I remember thinking I, before I knew about DNA and, mm -hmm. and uh, the ancestry and the twenty three and me and all that, or even before I knew about the Facebook. Um, but I would think to myself, and I never in my life ever said it out loud that is, you know, I, is dad my biological dad? How am I ever going to know? How I, am I going to sneak in and get some of his hair from his brush or his toothbrush? You know, just the silly things. And it's not that silly because why, how would you know? And all you've seen is TV. <laughs> Like that's what they get. That's what they do. And yeah, yeah. And so I, uh, I wrote down the date. It was. Um, I went. My sister Sherry lived in Carbondale in December twenty second of two thousand fourteen. I went to her house to visit, and we were sitting at the kitchen table, and she was talking about some of her half siblings from her real dad. Mm -hmm. And out of the blue i have no idea why i don't even know where it came from i said is dad my real dad and she has she took a deep breath and said i don't know huh yeah which i'm pissed off about that excuse my language mm -hmm. but so i mean obviously i was upset the next day I, I had went home and i called my older sister my oldest tina and i was like hey you know i i she lived in evansville and I was like, I need to come and see you. I need to talk to you in person. I need to tell, you know, I don't want to do this over the phone. She's like, oh, you can't do this to me. You, you know, I want to mm -hmm. see you, but what is this about? And I told her, I said, is dad, I asked her, I'm like, is dad my real dad? And she said, no. And I mean, I just like lost oh. it. And I like, I cried. See, I'm not like most of these people where they do a DNA test and mm -hmm. then they find out if I, mm -hmm. I didn't even know those even existed at the time. This was 2014. Yeah. They weren't so, so, so widely so known popular. about yet. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, I was, I was devastated. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, then she proceeded to call a sister and that sister called another sister. And then that sister called mom and mom was really upset. And then she created a group on Facebook called you and me. And she told me her story. Hmm. And the, the, the guy that she, the dude was his name, um, said that he had, she had been with him and found out she was pregnant, that he didn't want anything to do with me. He, he left, he had broken his back. He was a bull rider. I was about to say, was he a cowboy? <laughs> yeah, he okay. was a cowboy. He broke yeah. his back. And All right. Line. He was a lineman. And um, he had passed away in his mid-30s from a per perforated ulcer. Hmm. At the time, I felt bad. Like, I didn't want to hurt my mom's feelings or my dad. Because, I mean, mm -hmm. like I said, my parents were, they were good parents. But I also didn't fit in. Like, I didn't feel like I fit in. So when she you know she gave me all this information and that's the only time we ever talked about it was on the facebook group and that's that so group, interesting that she, that she couldn't quite face it right like in real life in real time but could, but could do this facebook filter experience it, it, it gets better okay okay <laughs> well, i consider myself a double npe uh-huh uh-huh um i i assume i you, am yeah so, you're growing you're growing population you doubles <laughs> okay, I know, tell right? Them. Yeah. Because you don't hear a lot of them. Um, so I did research and I found my grandmother and she was in a nursing home. And I was like, you know, I'm not gonna go. She's like 90 some years old. What am I gonna do? Hey grandma, it's your granddaughter Linda, you know. So I decided just to let it go. And a couple years later I did some research and she had passed away and it listed her grandchildren so i facebook that like found my brother on facebook and 
and I messaged him and he messaged me back and was like, you know, hey, what's up? And I just spilled the beans. Like I gave him, you know, I'm like, you know, my mom was with your dad. He was married at the time. Um, ah. And I told him the whole story. And um, he basically was like, yeah, well, my dad, that sounds like my dad. He wasn't very faithful to my mom. And, and, and he just, and I said, you know, he sent me a few pictures and I, I studied those pictures and tried mm -hmm. you know, to see the resemblance. And, you know, uh, he talked to me that one day and I said, will you please let the other siblings know about me? And if they want to contact me, they can. And, and I never heard from him again. Uh -huh. So then on December 30, so that was whenever I talked to my sister was 2014. And then I talked to Michael on June 5th, January 5th, 2016. So then in December 31st of 2020, I had done. You really focus on this family stuff in December's. Yeah. December, yeah, yeah. December yeah. January is really. Like I, had, I had done the ancestry and I had done the 23 and me, but there was nothing like, no, I had a lot on my mom's side, but nothing on the dad's side. But then in December 31st, uh, the a lady named Lori contacted me. She was doing her niece by marriage had done a DNA test and Lori does a lot of family tree building and, 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 and helps people like us find their family. And she contacted me and said, you know, you're showing up on my niece's family tree and I'm trying to figure out where you fit in. And you were like, story of my life. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. You know, and I'm like so excited. I'm like, finally, you know, I'm, I'm going to make contact with people that want to get to know me. And I asked her to call me and she did the next day. And once again, I just gave her my whole story, told her everything. And she said, Linda, honey, she's like, I'm looking at the DNA results right now. And the person that you said is your, your, your mom says is your father. It's not possible. This, uh, his name is, uh, is your father. So Our here we go father. again, crash, mm -hmm. you know, like, what? <laughs> his mom's telling me it's, you know, this person and, you know, DNA doesn't lie. Right. So, I, so confusing. And why well, it called my sister and she contacted my mom and my mom sent me a message saying, oh, I don't, that it's impossible. She said, the only people I was with was the dude and Mel, who is my father, mm -hmm. who raised me, my, my birth certificate father. Um, he will always be my dad. Yeah. I hear you. Nothing will ever change that. But the fact I should, I need to back up a minute. I've completely forgot about this. Uh, in this is a uh, dated J June 3rd, 1999. I was going through a really bad relationship. Hmm. I can't believe I forgot about this. And I got this letter and it came to my work and it says, Linda, you're a grown woman now and you deserve to know the truth. Sit your mother down and ask her for the truth. Melvin Rapp is not your real father. I wanted to tell you for a, for a long time, but I couldn't. Everyone in church knows the truth except for you and maybe your father. Good luck, a friend. What? Holy. So this was in 1999. Mackerel. So that happened in 1999. And I showed my mom. Uh -huh. And I was going through a really, really bad relationship, a breakup. And... I showed it to her and she said it was somebody trying to stir trouble. And I just. Sure. I just let it go. Like mm -hmm. I, I just didn't think of it and I put it away and saved it. And that's interesting. It it, it's interesting that you put it away and thought like, oh, okay, someone's just, I've got other things to focus on, right. but you kept it. Like there was still a part of you that knew this was going to be important. Yeah. Hmm. And the thing is, is I, I'm finding out now within the last couple of months is my aunts, my uncles, my cousins, my sisters, everybody knew. Mm. And nobody, which I get it. It's not their story to tell. So I didn't talk to my mom for like six or seven months. And I started kind of feeling guilty because, she, you know, she is my mom. And 
I went and I surprised her and I showed up at her house <laughs> and we, the only, only time we've ever talked in person about it. And it was because when Lori had contacted me, we stay, we still stay in contact somewhat. Um, she had found out some information about Garson, which I can hear I'm getting all mixed up. Um, but she had found out that he had a will and apparently he had a lot of money, like millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars. And they, he had a will and, and they wanted me to try to go after them for money. And I'm, I, I, I didn't, I don't want that. I'm not after mm -hmm. them. That's not me. I'm not, I don't care. I just want to know about him. But the niece contacted me and I wasn't allowed to tell the niece that I was in contact with Lori because this gets complicated quickly. Yeah. Okay. So I explained to my niece who, who's my half half niece. I told her, her, her mom would be my bio, half sister. Her, yeah. And I told her my whole story and she contacted her mom and also my half brother and they want nothing to do with me whatsoever. Won't even give me a chance to tell my story and say, Hey, this isn't my fault. Uh -huh. So, yeah um but sort of reiterates the feeling of not fitting in right like more of that that's all i ever i just want to know like about him and what he was like and i mean i was lied to for 42 and a half years mm -hmm. and, and then lied to again and then lied to again and has your mom ever come clean about any aspects of this she, guy when we met when i went to her house that's when that that or i was i got off sidetrack so easily done by me but uh, we did briefly talk about it and she said she started seeing a therapist and the therapist she told the therapist the story and the therapist told her hey this is about her not you this is her story you need to tell her the truth and that's when she said yes i broke up with um dude and i had a one night stand with this man and and then got back together with dude and then broke up with dude no got, no he no no he didn't get that like, didn't get back together dude. oh and never got back was, together with dude he okay. met mel my father who raised me and he said he, he when they met mom said in in the group facebook group she mm -hmm. said uh and she told dad that you know, you don't, you, I got three girls and I'm pregnant. You don't want, you know, you, I'm a mess. You don't want to be with me. And he's like, if it ever bothers me, I'll tell you. Mm. And so he raised four girls and then, and then they had Elaine. Um, and uh, she, yeah, but Elaine knew, Elaine was like. Elaine knew? Elaine knew, yeah. Come on, but, that feels unfair. Yeah, well, I have, all my sisters knew, everybody knew my aunts and uncles and cousins all i i asked you know like you know i've said hey did you did you know yeah I, yeah i knew did, I knew. did had there any, ever been any discussion about or have they i mean have they told you that there was any discussion about it about how everybody knew except for you no, or i i i i haven't my sister i do talk to my sister tina about it she's more open about it my sister gay wants nothing to do with like to her there that that mel is our father and nobody else exists mm -hmm. and sherry thinks like whenever that was scary because i did the 23 and me and i knew she had done the 23 and me and she didn't show up as my sister <gasps> like oh my god you know and what had happened is she'd set it to private and changed her email and then she and so she did go through the process to get it turned back on <laughs> because i was like i called her and i'm like wait a minute okay hold up <laughs> yeah <laughs> you're not my sister and she is but um she's more like she's whenever i talk to her about it she was like who's this lori lady and why is she doing this why is she was thinking mm -hmm. that lori was trying to hurt me or get something out of me like wanting something and i'm like I'm not a total idiot. I mean, I'm not going to give her like my social security number or debit card number. Right. I mean, Lori has been nothing but great and supportive and, and tried to help me and is helping other people also do go through this. But during this time and between 2014 and 
Well, I think I went, I, I joined the, the NPE group, but I didn't, I had seen it on Good Morning America. With yeah, them. so many of us. Yeah. And there's a lot. Yeah. So that's when I got introduced to the, the group. And ever since I follow, I try to follow most of the groups. I've listened to everybody that I can think mm -hmm. of, podcast yours. The day that I messaged you, I'd been wanting to for a long time. And I've never publicly told my story ever. And uh, my my dog is having a little snack over here next to me. Um, He's welcome to. He can. <laughs> we we like dogs on this podcast. My fiftieth. My my parents were married June seventeenth, nineteen seventy two, and I was born July eighteenth, nineteen seventy two. But June seventeenth, the fiftieth anniversary, is the day that I contacted you. Oh. And I don't know, something just like, like I said, I have started so many emails to mm -hmm. you and just, just stopped, but something drew me to, and I did it. And then you, yeah. emailed and me here back, we are, and you emailed me right back and it was like, oh, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Something <laughs> cosmic about their relationship and your conception. And it was time to tell your story. Yeah. I, I've never. I've talked to people about it, but never like this publicly. Like, that. yeah. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that your mom wanted to keep all of it such a secret? One, two things. My dad, because my dad is he's um he's a, a very well liked person, very hard worker. Um, very well known in the community and he I don't think he wanted anybody to know in that and I think they were worried about my feelings mm -hmm. also but when mom created that group she said be careful what you post on Facebook because of your dad's feelings mm. so that kind of hurt because I'm like well, wait, wait. <laughs> but I'm I don't like hurting people's feelings, especially my dad. Right. You know, I've never talked to him about it ever. I want to so bad, so bad. I just don't know how. Mm -hmm. So bad. And how old is he now? Uh, he's getting close to 80. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember making like my mom grade really early. Like she had her first gray hair when she was 16. And my grandpa on my dad's side had coal black hair and I'm like, yeah, I take after my dad because I don't have any gray hair. And everybody's like, you're 50 years old and you don't have gray hair. And I'm like, no. Mm -hmm. And I would, I remember thinking of different things that I would try to compare right. to him or to my mom to figure out. Mm -hmm. I found out I was 50% Jewish. Had no clue. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh. No clue at all. No clue. I'm 50%. Ashkenazi. Ashkenazi. Wow. Yeah. He was a hundred percent, obviously. Mm -hmm. but yeah. Yeah. So double double NPE and fifty percent Ashkenazi. But it was yeah. It was so hard. Like I had to go live through it again. Mm -hmm. That was a I, and I still haven't told Michael, who I thought was my half brother. I haven't told him. I don't know how to tell him. I'm sorry. My mom lied to me again. <laughs> right. Really yeah. You haven't been reaching out with him, him or right. continuing like a correspondence. Yeah. Well, do you need to? I guess that's the question. I mean, you know, I mean, that's the yeah. question I think yeah. Yeah. for all of it is like everybody. It come, it's so complex because you're. Because there's a part of me that recognizes that our community really focuses on the truth and how everybody needs to know the truth. And so does this man out there need to know that he doesn't have his half sister out there? And he, doesn't, he doesn't care, obviously. Right. If you, that right. One conversation and haven't spoke in since 2016. Oh, yeah, that's a long time. But I'm just so like, you know, if if my if God didn't want anything to do with me, I would have liked to try, like I would have mm -hmm. had the opportunity. She had more than one chance. Do you know who wrote that letter? Do you think you figured it out? Know. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. That is 
somebody, yeah. somebody just really felt like they just couldn't stand it, that, that everybody knew except you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then and if it also said, I don't know, if, honestly, I don't know if my dad knows. Mm-hmm. In the, in that group that she created, she said that nobody knew she was pregnant because her weight fluctuated and she, she hit it very well. I mean, for all I know, she could have, but I don't know. I honestly don't know if it was a, about her feelings or my dad's feelings or my feelings. I really right. don't know because mom has been known to lie for like, I remember growing up and mom lying about us girls doing things like mm. when does going to go to her sister's? Well, when, mom told me I could go to town and cruise town. But she told dad, I just went to my sister's. Well, somebody, I had a little, uh, somebody ran into the side of the car. She somehow avoided letting dad see the back of the car and then went to work on Monday and said, oh, hey, called dad and said, somebody hit me while I was at work. She did things like that. Huh. Sounds like she's trying to protect a lot of people from a lot of different but then why did feelings, she, right? Why did she tell other people? Why did people in the church know? Why did, everybody know? <laughs> why did why did they, all my nieces and nephews right. and cousins and aunts and uncles? Why did they all know if it was such a secret? Do, do you did your did your sisters? I mean, have you asked them? I guess I would. This would be a question I could ask them. But have you asked them? Do they remember? Were they instructed not to tell you? Do you remember if they know that like oh this is a secret that we're gonna all agree upon? No, no, I don't. I like to, I, Tina was that one of my aunts told her when she was probably she. I think she said she was fourteen or fifteen. Oh, meddling sis, a meddling aunt. Hmm. I'm really interested in in all parts of your story, but I really am interested in in this idea of you as a little girl feeling like you don't fit in anywhere, and and it. And I know that we talk about this, like we all talk about this, not feel, not fitting in. And it turns out you were right. And that's it. You hear that so much. Right. You hear it. Right. And it's an intuition thing, but still there's something about the way you say it for some reason today that like, I'm hearing the sort of, or like feeling the gravity of how mysterious it is that you felt something, you suspected something. And not only was it true, but every your all your sisters were holding this secret and that, and so that, so you, so it was true. And then for you to say, I don't know why, but this just blurted out of me is dad, my dad. Yeah, yeah I have no idea. Like why, I'm why would not, you say that? And, and why did she say, I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah. And like, that's something I'm going to ask her, but I'm, I don't want confrontation. I don't want to bring it up. And I, cause I, I, I need to get over, I'm 50 years old for God's sake. I, I mean, I'm better than I was, but I just don't want to hurt people's feelings. And, well, neither did. And, I mean, that's, that sounds like that's kind of your family's they, pattern. One of the pattern is to not hurt people's feelings. So nobody tell any, you know, <laughs> nobody tell anybody to their face what the truth, you know, everybody protect everybody. Like everybody, you know, don't hurt Mel's, don't hurt Mel's feelings. Don't hurt Linda's reputation. Don't, you know, don't let's yeah. keep everything. Uh, I, when I was in, I wasn't the greatest. It's embarrassing. I wasn't the greatest in school. Um, I finally did connect with a tutor that helped me get as far as I did. But my sister, like I said, was really good in sports and she played volleyball and the school they went to another school recruited her to go to the school to play volleyball because they thought she would have a better chance my mom and dad got in a week a, a legal separation my mom moved to a different town got a new job and it came to me my i had completed my junior year and was about to start my senior year came to me and asked me if i wanted to quit school so elaine could go to this other school oh because if you could quit school well i mean i I, i'm here i am 18 years old about to start my senior year i hate school right yeah i'm what what are you gonna say i mean yeah i mean i went to my ged and went to Mm -hmm. college later but i mean that's how my like air it was it was always about elaine Mm -hmm. (laughs) because 
Elaine passed away, uh, and I, yeah, it's uh, in mm. 2007. I mean, and we were so close. I mean, she was wow. so good. I'm so my sorry. Partner. No, it's it's fine, but it's it just hurts because we were so so dang close. I mean, we were a year and seven months apart, and we grew up together. We did everything together, and but yet here's Elaine and here's Linda, uh, you know, uh, she's up here and I'm down here, but she was always very protective of me. Uh, did you ever see a league of their own? Yes. There was that part in the beginning where the two sisters are walking yep. and she says like, I hate meeting people because mom and dad always say, this is our daughter Dottie. And this is our other daughter Dottie's sister. Yep, that <laughs> like, like that's immediately what I thought. That would of. be me, but I'm the older one. <laughs> right, right, right. Dottie's older in that movie, but yeah, it's hard when I, I, to be in someone's shadow like that, and then to put all these pieces together over time. Um, it's got to be, if, even if it's not painful, it's got to be sort of uncomfortable and strange to navigate your identity that way for so long. My, my, my sister Tina did tell me like not too long ago, because I, 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 she said that I just needed to basically call mom and forgive her and get it over with. Because I, I've gone with, I'm back, I'm back to not talking to her because all of a sudden it's like everything's like. I mean, think it. More time goes on, the more things make sense. Mm. And I love my mom. I mean, she's been a great mom. And other than this, and I'm just not ready to forgive her. And I know I need to because she's elderly, and but I just, I just can't not right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. There's just too much anger of too many lies. Right. Yeah. Once all the pieces start falling together. It's weird how it happened, though, because when I first found out, I felt like I it was almost like I felt guilty that I stirred up and, and I felt bad for my parents and I didn't want them to be upset. Which is what? And I still don't. Their, which is kind of like their intention in the first place. Like this, <laughs> right? was like, we don't want to upset anybody, so don't tell anybody. And then you find out and it's like, don't, you don't want to upset anybody. Well, she did tell me that she was in that group message. She was never going to tell me. Mm -hmm. She had, had not had not ever planned on telling me. Mm -hmm. But do you think you know, that they do you think that they uh recognized or were seeing how out of place you felt and ever I don't, thought about that or thought I don't think I don't know. Um I know that my mom, you know, knows that I'm still upset about it, but mm -hmm. I don't know that she I don't know. I just I'm like I said I'm not ready to talk to her. I hear you. It's it's uh I, I really admire the people that are able to to have those really uncomfortable conversations or go, get, I don't know, or like get through. Uh, ugh, it's just, it's hard. I mean, I, there's tons of things I haven't talked to my mom about tons, tons. And yeah. part of it is because it's so hard and it's so frustrating and I'll cry so hard. And then she gets upset. Um, and, and oh, to what end? I'm just not sure to what end always the missing pieces the podcast missing mm -hmm. pieces. Mm -hmm. with don don yeah that one podcast that he did where the phone call to the mother mm -hmm. where he he recorded his conversation with his mother i was like oh my god that's exactly what i want to say to my mom <laughs> and i actually sent it to my sister and said hey this is what i want to say and she told me no don't do that don't do that <laughs> yeah i mean well, i didn't that have the I didn't have the, you know, some of the earlier trauma that he had, but what he said to his mom is exactly how I feel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was an amazing podcast. Yeah, he's, oh, his podcast is so great. If anybody well, has it. Where am I? Well, we're very different. We're, we're every, <laughs> just different podcasts. And he, and uh, so if you haven't, if anybody hasn't listened to Don Anderson's, um, it's called Missing Pieces, NPE Life. Uh, and he does a great podcast. And what's cool is to hear about people hearing a podcast whether it's mine or somebody else's and you saying oh i relate to that i'm going to send this to my sister and see if this is a way i can communicate like you're just right. kind of trying something else like she doesn't understand me but maybe maybe this will work and i think that's i can't speak for dom but 
I, or any of the podcasters, but I think that's a lot of what we're trying to do is give people tools and resources yeah. in, to, in different mediums to try and communicate this experience. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I, I've listened to Lily and you and I mean, all of Danny Shapiro. I've read her mm-hmm, book. Mm-hmm. I love reading. I, I, I try to find books geared toward NPEs or something, you know, uh, movies, shows, anything. I, cause it, it makes you feel like, you're, you know, it makes you feel better. Mm-hmm. Bad, mm-hmm. but better. You're right. Right. Kind of, it's uh, sometimes I think like it's so in in um in some books and like well in soap opera type books or melodramatic books or or story you know when I say books I also mean TV or movies or British mysteries like there's so much NPE stuff that it's almost surprising that we're all so surprised <laughs> and yet it's still being a part of a secret club like okay or a you know a subculture um I don't know exactly what I'm trying to say just that it's it's sort of like they don't get it because they put it so casually into everything, but then maybe they do get it. And it's every it's, it's everywhere. It's sort of both. Maybe it's both. And I don't think that they knew that this, like that everything was going to change. No. So much back. I mean, yeah. We didn't know we were going to have DNA tests, commercial DNA testing. Mm-hmm. I was going to say, I think about that with my parents a lot when they made, when they made their decisions, um, one, you know, lots, lots of things, but one, they were really young Two, There was no Facebook. There wasn't, not only was there no Facebook, there was no internet. <laughs> there was not even an yeah. internet and 3000 miles. They, so what they did, they moved away 3000 miles and just, you know, never said anything to anybody. And they were so confident they would never be contacted because 3000 miles was so far away that our names and addresses were in the phone book. Mm-hmm. Like, that man could have found found us and did. I mean, it's a complicated story, but like at any point, but they were like, it's 3000 miles. Just didn't. I know that's what fathom, they thought. You can't fathom something. I, I, I'm not trying to make excuses for anybody and say that a lie is always better if you're not going to get caught or something. I know it's more complex than that, but sometimes the decisions that, that people are making feel like the, the easiest ones to make it's really hard going to family gatherings especially mm. all i can do is sit there and think do you know right or do i i don't feel like i belong even i know i grew up with these people mm-hmm. i mean it's hard but I, I can't explain it i i just don't feel like i belong because i'm not dna related to them. i think of any audience that's going to understand that more than any other this one is you don't have to explain what it is to not belong yeah but that's a lot but you've lived a long life of that kind of ache it's a long time to have yeah, that feeling and I then i didn't express that enough mm-hmm. how i did not feel like i belonged and then for it all just to be like you know to find out why that I mean, it all makes, everything makes so much sense. You found out why, but I might also argue that there's very little closure in your story because you can't connect with the other family at all. I, I haven't wrote, I haven't tried that hard, but I, I don't know. I don't know how, I guess, maybe, or the right things to say, or I, I don't want to upset anybody. I don't want to bring up old that's what you do (laughs) the theme the theme of this family system is don't upset anybody yeah and it is i mean it's always don't tell dad Mm -hmm. tell dad don't tell dad (laughs) Mm -hmm. yeah right so how long is it how long has this how long has the second confirmation been for you since you figured out the the real, the, the, the real, it was not uh, dude. Right. Um, December 31st, 2020. So January 1st of 2021. Okay. Is when Lori contacted me. And I guess with, when it comes with, when I talk about Lori, her niece by marriage, there, there's some family issues there. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. like the mom doesn't like Lori and, 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 
the, uh, my half sister is mad at Jamie for taking the DNA test. Oh, Jamie. Jamie's my half niece. Exposing all these secrets or complicating <laughs> things and getting Lori yeah. involved. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, and then Jamie contacted her mom and, and her uncle and immediately shut it down. How? I don't understand how people can just, I mean, not you're my sister and brother for god's sake i mean i was so excited i was like mm. finally i'm gonna get to know some people on my side of the you know on this side of the family and then and then jamie spoke to me a few times and then I mean, we are friends on facebook but uh she, yeah we don't there's not you know like we don't talk every day or yeah i like i that. find i'm finding unless you have um well, I, I get it's different for everybody, so I don't want to say what it's like unless. But for me, it's been very difficult to to create a or like form a strong foundation when there's so much mystery and so much blank space and so much um, so many questions. If I could get together with my siblings, there might be more time and space to talk about all that, but over Facebook and messages, mm -hmm. um, it's very hard to know how to navigate all the uncomfortable stuff as well, as well as the getting to know each other stuff. <laughs> like, I'm one of the most kindest people. I will do anything for anybody. And, and, and I just don't understand how somebody can just mm -hmm. be like, I get it. Your dad cheated on your mom, but it, it's not my fault. Yeah, I no, I mean, I'm with you. I'm with you 100%. And I sometimes think that they're uh, the only way that they could do that is because they have to and their mind literally thinks they'll die. If they if they cross into this reality, they'll die. And so denial is the only way. And that's how I understand it sometimes that that's that's how I try to understand denial, that it's a survival tactic. Yeah. But that doesn't make it hurt less on your end necessarily, yeah. right? I have good days and bad. I have days where I can't stop thinking about it and I get mad. I have days where I get so mad. I'm just like, why? Why? Why did? Why couldn't anybody tell me? And then there's days mm -hmm. where I'm, I'm crying. But there's not a day that goes by that I don't think about it. It's the sad part. It's like, man, but. I me just too. need to. really yeah me too i don't think it's a day i don't think about it yeah yeah and i someone asked the other day if you ever heal and someone was like no you never heal <laughs> i mean that was, that's a that's a loose summary of the conversation and i was like i don't know i think it depends on your definition i think about it every day but it it might hurt less yeah some days and the, and the um, good days yeah. the, there are more good days than bad days now and yeah, definitely. I had pot my husband a DNA test and he refused to take it. He said he was afraid what happened to me would happen. To me. Yeah, I have all my friends say that. They're like, oh no. <laughs> yeah. We're not going there. But my daughter, my daughter wanted it, so I gave it to her and mm. so she took it. Oh good. I'm, and her dad is her dad. So <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Her um yeah, my mother in law <laughs> just took it. <clears throat> she just mailed one in. And uh when I saw it on her kitchen table and I was like, what are you doing? I don't know oh. if you want to do that. Taking a can of worms. Playing with fire. Not, uh, what is her name? Laura? No. Oh, I'm going to have to look it up. She would, I uh, have, we've talked once on the phone, but uh, she's also, she's the closest person I'm not going to be able to find her name. I just I went blank. Uh, but she lives in Kentucky, but also spends a lot of time in Florida. Um, we talked, but she's the only person that I've I've never really I've never met anybody in person mm -hmm. that, that I can relate to, which is also hard because I try to explain to Josh how I feel. Mm -hmm. And he says he I mean, he's he's agreeable with me and he understands, but he doesn't. He's like, I don't I, it's not happened to me. So I can't, mm -hmm. you know, 100 mm -hmm. percent relate where you're in Indiana. Yeah. 
sounds like we need to like get you into those retreats. We need to get you to the retreats or. Um, most of them are, are too far away. Yeah. We need to loop you into the, schedule. into the meetups and stuff. There, uh, there were, was supposed to be one in, was it Louisville, Kentucky? I think. There's but one next have... there's one next March in Louisville. There's a big okay, yeah, like they a have, convention in Louisville. To be like in, yeah, I was planning I'm hoping to go to that one. Okay. Because that's I... only a couple hours away. Oh, all right. I'll go look um, on a map. But um have you done the have you done any of the Zoom groups? Are you able to connect with because there's a lot on that are in like Central and East Coast time? Um the one what was it that was that was going to be till like because I'm on central time? Yeah, it was like nine o'clock at night, and I get up at four in the morning. To oh, work. no! Oh, no! So, yeah, that will not work. I have joined one, and then the one with the primal fear, the reckoning yep. of the primal fear. I'm gonna, I paid for that so I could be good. Yeah. They're such a great community, Togetherness Heals, that group, and they run the Higher Earth Hope and Healing Retreats. Like, I would really yeah. recommend trying to... I really want to go to one. Them. Every time one pops up, I'm like, checking it out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dang, you know, because I work in retail. It's hard to, during, especially the holidays and stuff. Right. Yeah, you, you can't get off. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, maybe we, can all, your, maybe we can all manifest it for you. I'll yeah, <laughs> be a man we can have it. I wore your little pin every day to work. Oh, so, good. Yeah, I, I was the first one to, you said to order from uh -huh. you. Yeah. Oh, great. I wear it every day to work. So. Oh, good. You're always with me. No, oh, <laughs> well, maybe, maybe. Yeah. Well, no. hey, if that helps. When I talk about it, I'm like, hey, you know, they're like, what does that pin mean? I'm like, oh my gosh, this is, a, it's a podcast and there's a whole bunch of different people. And I tell them about all the different people that do the podcast. And you're just like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> they're like wow she's really enthusiastic about that uh, well that's yeah well that's great that means a lot to me well thank you so much linda for giving your giving me some time in your afternoon on a friday um i really want to like bring you into i really hope you can connect with the people at reckoning with the primal wound and and um because i really i really hear that need for connection in real life had, you know just talking to people it can be so yeah, powerful i had gone to a counselor therapist and mm. <laughs> took me two months to get in because of covid and you know there was, mm -hmm. i went and seen her and I, you know i kind of you know we talked a little bit and she started telling me that i needed to pray and go to church and carry and i was just like, <laughs> as soon as you said as soon as like if you're the tone where you said i went to go see a counselor i was like oh no oh no and oh no so, where's the story going yeah, yeah and, oh boy and then it was gonna take she wanted to see me again and it was gonna be another two months and i'm like i am not going to somebody that that's gonna tell me that i need to talk to god and I, you know i'm i'm not gonna go into that but the nearest therapist for uh, my type of stuff is like in Louisville or Indianapolis, Indiana, which is several hours away. And it's like, <laughs> right. there's not a lot of that in this area. Hmm. Okay. I'm gonna keep my eyes and ears open and think of some, try and think of some ideas. <laughs> but in the meantime, get on those <laughs> groups on Facebook for sure. And the, and any sort oh, of I'm live, on... the live, any kind of live zoom gatherings that, you know, Mm -hmm. it's not the same yeah. as in person but it's better than nothing better than nothing it, it's always it's nice to hear other people's stories i mm -hmm. really enjoy i do it you know you're not alone mm -hmm. oh i'm so glad well i'm so glad you told your story and especially this this sub 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 group of double mpes you all got to get together and get your own podcast going yeah um yeah i just wish i would have known sooner mm -hmm. right Something to keep in mind if you're out there knowing the truth. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'll be in touch. All right. Have a great weekend. Bye. You too. Bye. Thank you, Linda, again, for showing up for yourself and for this community by sharing your feelings about this very alarming experience that you had twice, not once, but twice. I know I'm not the only person who is grateful you decided to do that. Have I talked to y'all about ancestry brewing yet? Well, please give me a minute to do so. Uh, back in 2022, just last year, my Aunt Ginny, who lives in Oregon, sent me a photo that she had taken of a cooler full of ancestry brewing beer bottles. Um, 
just for fun. She just sent it to me for fun. But I sent Ancestry Brewing an email along the lines of like, hey, I do a podcast and it's all about ancestry and you have a beer called Ancestry. (laughs) We should collaborate. Um, And the guys at Ancestry Brewing were like, yeah, totally. And they sent me a big box of beer. It's delicious. It's crafted in small batches. They have all sorts of brews and they are called Ancestry Brewing. I mean, come on. It's so perfect for us. We're its people. It's our beer. It's perfect. So check them out. They're at AncestryBrewing.com. And if you're a listener who happens to live in the Pacific Northwest, go find yourself son. Okay. If you're listening to this podcast and want me to know anything about the way you're feeling or thinking, would you shoot me a message? My email is eve at everythingsrelativepodcast.com. I'm on all the socials at Everything's Relative Podcast. And you can find me online at everythingsrelativepodcast.com. So head over there to find all the ways you you can support this project if you want it to continue. If you don't want it to continue, well, don't go over there to support me. I'm glad you're here, regardless. And I hope you listen to another episode, if not all the episodes. I'll post something else really soon. And in the meantime, I hope you're taking care of yourself, staying warm if it's cold and cool if it's hot. And don't forget to always fasten your seatbelt. I'm Eve Sturgis. This is Everything's Relative. Bye-bye. Everything's Relative with Eve Sturgis is produced by Eve Sturgis and Kaylin Egan and edited by Joy Rumor. Logo designed by Ivy McNally and music is used with permission from Goodbye the Band. Eve is a licensed psychotherapist, but her podcast episodes are not therapy sessions. Thank you.